Good evening. It's good to be with you. Welcome to our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. We are going to be looking at Psalm 11 tonight. Really looking forward to it. Um, Psalm 11 is just an awesome psalm. It uh, gives us insight in um, what a relationship with God looks like when somebody is confident in God and how then they talk with God, how then they talk about God with others. I think it's it's just it's just going to be a great little study tonight. So really looking forward to sharing with you. Today was my day off, so uh, I've had a great day. Got a workout in, got to do some smoking. I got my smoker fired up this morning and uh, smoked some uh, salmon for the family for dinner tonight. It turned out awesome. Had a really healthy dinner with the family, and so that was just great. And now I get to be with you with Bible study, so I'm really looking forward to it. So I want to encourage you to get out your Bibles, open them up. We're going to read the 11th Psalm. We're going to study the 11th Psalm, and then we're going to pray from the 11th Psalm. So we're not just going to get like head knowledge or even heart knowledge, but we're actually going to talk with God tonight, instructed by His Word. And, you know, I just think it's really uh, helpful to remember when a child comes into this world, you know, when, when your children were born, they didn't come into this world knowing how to talk. You know, how did they learn how to talk? By listening to you, listening to listening to their parents, right? And, uh, and by listening and then repeating back the words that they heard, then they developed their vocabulary, they learned how to talk. And... Um, the same thing's too true with praying to God. When we come into this world, we don't know how to talk to God either. So then how do we learn God's vocabulary? From Scripture. And so by studying Scripture, we learn how God talks. We learn how to talk with God. And it's just a tremendous blessing. We absolutely believe that if the Christian is focused on prayer, that's guided by Scripture, by the power of the Holy Spirit, they can overcome in every test, trial, temptation, and travail that comes across their path in life. I want to encourage you to use lots of positive emojis, hearts, thumbs up, smiley faces, all those great things. Share this broadcast on your social media and uh, just talk away. For those of you who are from out of town, let us know where you're from. And um, we, we love to see that. There's, a, there's prayer uh, resources there on the Facebook page. So if you have something you'd like us to pray for, hit the, hit the prayer button there. And we'd love to pray for you or pray with you. So please avail yourself of all those resources. All right, let's look at Psalm 11. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for all of your blessings in our lives. We thank you, Father, that we can come to you in prayer. Father, it's Friday. It's been a, it's been a full week. And um, we come to you now, Father, at the, at the close of this week, at the beginning of the weekend. And, and we pray, Father, um, for just a prayer of thanksgiving for all that you've provided us with and blessed us with. Father, we also come to you and recognize that as we look back over this past week, there were things that we had hoped we would do at the beginning of the week we never got around to. And um, there are things that we know you would have wanted us to do and we chose not to do them. And so, Father, where we have not been the children that you would want us to be, Father, we ask for your forgiveness. We come to you, um, Father, we, we trust in your son's sacrifice on our behalf. And we thank you for the relationship that we have with you by grace through faith. Bless us now, Father, as we look at your word, as we study the 11th Psalm. Speak to us, Father. Uh, help us to grow in our confidence in prayer with you and our prayer towards you on behalf of others. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to your will and for your glory. And all of God's children, we all say... Amen. Amen. All right. I am so excited. So we're going to look at the 11th Psalm. And as we're studying the 11th Psalm, I want to encourage you just to think about, you know, what is God's word saying to me about how I should pray? Um, because I, I think that, you know, a lot of us are not confident in prayer. And I think, uh, I believe that as we study Scripture more and just look at Scripture through the lens for the purpose of what does Scripture say to us about how we would talk with God, that then we will have more confidence because we will we will understand, we will grow uh, in the realization that we are talking, we are speaking God's vocabulary. And that's really, um, that's what I, I want you to get out of this tonight and every night, is just to, to grow in your prayer time, your prayer language with God. 
So, uh, as we look at the 11th Psalm, I think, you know, to sort of to understand, you know, what God's trying to teach us here in the 11th Psalm regarding prayer, I think one thing that's helpful to do is to look at what are the emotions of the writer. Now, we know who the writer is in the 11th Psalm. It's David. And um, I think, to me, as I look at the 11th Psalm, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, as I look at the 11th Psalm, I see David exhibiting a lot of confidence, uh, if, you, if you have your Bibles open, the 11th Psalm, uh, uh, in verse 1, David says, In the Lord I take refuge. And then in verses 4 to 7, he describes God and his activities. And, and these verses show that David uh, is exhibiting complete confidence with God's ability to protect. Now, and here's the thing I think that's also important to note, is that David is confident but he's not arrogant, okay? And I think that's always, you know, uh, helpful too, because in the context of the 11th Psalm, David is apparently talking to many other people, okay? And so David is expressing his confidence in God, but he's not being arrogant towards those who are around him. So because he is humble in his confidence, then um, he, he displays a healthy uh, example of confidence. He, for example, he keeps emotions in check. As you read through the 11th Psalm, you see emotions that could easily become unhealthy. He keeps emotions in check. Um, we read through the 11th Psalm, you're going to see that David doesn't criticize these people that he's talking to. You know, they are not giving him the best advice. He doesn't criticize them. He gets them to think about uh, how great God is and what living with God uh, looks like. And so David doesn't criticize uh, these people who are around him who are not giving him the best advice. And uh, another thing about David, um, having this confident relationship with God, is David doesn't accept excuses. And we're going to look at that here as we unpack uh, Psalm 11. There are excuses that are brought up regarding why David should do something or not do something that wouldn't demonstrate a strong faith towards God. David does not accept these excuses. And also, lastly, I would just have to point out to you that because David's confident, he doesn't just go along. You know, his friends are going to give him some bad advice. The easy thing to do when you're not confident in God is to go along with the crowd. David's not a go-along-with-the-crowd kind of guy. And I think that also is instructive for us, should be instructive for us, in how we would pray and talk with God for ourselves and on behalf of others. Uh, so I think, you know, one of the emotions that David uh, expresses here is confidence. I think another emotion that David uh, expresses here is that he's uh, evangelistic almost. You know, when you look at verse 1, uh, in the second line there, David says, How then can you say to me? Da -da 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 -da. And, and, and uh, so there's these people who are saying these things to him. And, uh, and David is fully hoping that he is going to win them over, help them grow, help grow them by the power of the Holy Spirit into a stronger relationship and understanding of who God is. Um, David questions the questions of doubt regarding God. He doesn't just take, he doesn't just accept their questions regarding God, these questions of doubt regarding God. No, he questions the questions, okay? And uh, the doubters that David is talking to, you know, are asking, you know, what can the righteous do? And you, you, you hear that today, you know, oh, it's just so terrible. You know, there's so many, you know, what I call chicken little Christians. They, they run around, oh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. That's kind of how David's friends are. Oh, what, what can the righteous do? And David's like, uh, duh, nothing. We're not doing it. God's doing it. <laughs> you know, all praise, honor, glory be to God. So I think those are some of the emotions of David in the 11th Psalm. And I think that's helpful because... Um, this gives us uh, insight and inspiration, wisdom, and in how to pray to God and how to help other people pray to God. Uh, then I think also, you know, to, to understand what God's teaching us through Scripture here is to look at what is the situation at hand? What's going on in Psalm 11? 
and uh, in the 11th Psalm. And so I think, you know, I mentioned this earlier, David is talking to more than one person. And, and we know that because grammatically, when you look at this, you, you study it in the Hebrew, you see that his responses are in the plural, they're not in the singular. And so David's talking to a group of people. Uh, the scene to, to a lot of us, you know, reminds us of Job and his naysayer friends, right? His negative Ned friends. Uh, this is kind of like that. Likewise, in the New Testament, you, you have Peter, you know, Peter telling Jesus, oh, don't, don't, don't go to the cross, you know, don't, 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 don't be crucified. And, uh, you know, Peter probably meant well when he avoid, advises Jesus to avoid the cross. But the reality is, is he was being used by Satan and Jesus had to call him on that, right? Apparently, also, the situation at hand here, uh, as near as we can tell, is that Saul's kingdom is, is struggling. It might even be sort of teetering at this point. And so one of the things that David's friends are, are saying to David in the 11th Psalm is, look, dude, the kingdom's falling apart. There's no legitimate authority here. You've got, you're not going to get a fair shake in court. You need to head for the hills, okay? There's no authority to appeal to, okay? So that's kind of the situation at hand. And I think, you know, we might see some of that in our culture today, you know. Um, and so then what voices are we going to listen to? And how, how, how is the 11th Psalm going to inform us in our prayer? Um, another thing I think to, to look at in analyzing the psalm to help us better be better people of prayer is to look and see, well, what requests does the psalmist have? And in the 11th Psalm, you really don't see any requests per se uh, of God. Uh, in verses 4 to 7, you have descriptions of God's activity, but you really don't have requests per se of God. Uh, another thing I think is always good to look at is, is there a confession made? Does, does the psalmist, does the writer say, Mia culpa, you know, I am guilty, you know, I am sorry, please forgive me. And uh, no, don't see that here. Now you do see a confession in the sense of a public proclamation of his faith in the one true living God, okay? And then uh, any references in the New Testament regarding this psalm? Yes, there are. Psalm 11, 4 is found in Matthew 5, verse 34, and also Matthew 23, verse 22. And uh, I want to thank the uh, social media team that's taking notes and putting these notes up. Uh, it's just really appreciate all your hard work answering questions and everything from everybody there. So Psalm 11.4 is found in Matthew 5, verse 34. Also Matthew 23, 22. You can check that out on your own. And then also Psalm 11, verse 6 is found referenced in Revelation 9, uh, 17. Then I think here's one of the, the really important parts when you're, when you're trying to unpack Scripture is to look at the scripture you're studying and to say, okay, what is the most important word in this section of scripture? I just think it's really important. It's, it's, it requires discipline because it's easy to just sort of say, oh, this is important, that's important, all these different things are important. But what's, what's the most important word? Or even I'll let you get away with a phrase, but what is the most important word? Because then it grounds us, our focus in the word. What is the most important word in this section? Love to hear your thoughts, your ideas. For me, when I look at Psalm 11, um, the most important word is a word that's translated as refuge in verse 1. Because it's David's understanding of God as his refuge, as David's refuge, that then David draws on to refute the logic of his friends. It's David's understanding of God as his refuge which David then, un then unpacks in verses 4 to 7 regarding God's activity. And uh, this is really a cool section of scripture. Now here's something that I thought was kind of interesting. The word that's translated as refuge is used in the Old Testament 37 times. This is the only time it's translated as refuge in, in the most popular translations. Do you know how it's translated the rest of the time, it's translated as trust. And that sort of makes sense that the refuge, your refuge is a place that you trust. But I think it's also interesting to do that little bit of word study and dig a little deeper into God's word. Because a refuge is, to me, a refuge is like a physical location. It's a place. Maybe it's even someone, but it's like real, right? And so for David, you know, I, I love what the translators did in this, in this situation. They, they took this concept of trust, which is so important, and they made it real. They showed that for David, his trust was real. 
he he had a, a solid uh, faith and and a and a and a and a very strong and real trust in God. And so um, I, I just love that. So I wanted to point that out to you. Um, this psalm, the eleventh psalm, has been called uh, the answer of faith to the advice of fear. Let that marinate in your mind for a little bit. The answer of faith to the advice of fear. You know, in our lives, we're going to have well-intended friends who are going to advise us from a viewpoint of fear, from a focus of fear. And so the 11th Psalm is just a powerful Psalm. If you have in your life, your influential people in your life uh, tend to walk around fearful a lot, uh, this is a good Psalm to hold on to. If you know somebody who's struggling with that, they don't have the strongest of friends in their lives, they have influential people in their lives who are always operating out of fear. Um, the 11th Psalm is a great Psalm uh, because it's, the advice, it's been called the advice of faith. It's the answer of faith to the advice of fear. Uh, I think it's a good reminder to choose our counsel wisely, especially regarding spiritual matters. And I just wanna say this, perspective, proper perspective, is super important in our faith walk. You know, <laughs> the old joke is that um, there was a, uh, a sailor, a soldier, a Marine, and an airman. And they were asked one time, what would you do if you found a scorpion in your tent on deployment? And, uh, and the sailor said, well, if I found a scorpion in my tent on deployment, you know, I, I would, I would uh, take out a, a, a gun and I would shoot it. And then the, the soldiers asked, well, what would you do if you found a scorpion in your tent on deployment? And the soldier said, well, I would, I'd put my boots on and I'd smash it. And then they asked the Marine, what would you do if you found a scorpion in your tent on deployment? And then Marine said, well, I'd take out my K-bar knife and I'd stab it and I'd eat it. And then they asked the airman, what would you do if you found a, a scorpion in your tent on deployment? And the airman said, well, first thing I'd do is I'd, I'd call the front desk and ask them what this tent is doing in my hotel room. <laughs> it's, it's all about perspective. <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, David has got the proper perspective. So let's take, uh, uh, let's look at a couple of verses um, from Psalm 11 for wisdom and how to, to better pray. <laughs> Uh, so Psalm 11, verse 1, in the Lord I take refuge, okay? Um, the person who says these words is not surprised that life isn't always perfect, right? Life's not always perfect. And so, and so the person who's confident in God says, yeah, okay, it's not going great. Stuff's falling apart. My refuge, my trust is in the one true living God of Israel. In the Lord I take refuge, you know, what a blessing this verse is also, these words are, in the Lord I take refuge. What a blessing it is to be able to take refuge in God when I've messed up, right? You know, when you've messed up, when you're trying to help somebody, you're trying to encourage somebody who's messed up. You know, to be able to just speak 11, Psalm 11 verse 1, to maybe work that into your prayer, that God in you we take refuge when things go sideways and upside down. Uh, Psalm 11, verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. You know, I, I just, I love that. I love that phrase. The Lord is in his holy temple. To me, I just jotted some notes down for us here. Um, you know, the endless labor in which we toil today will no longer be. Heaven, we will not be doing this endless sort of labor that we're doing now. The appointments which we sacrifice so much to make on this earth, the appointments that are so important that we have to sacrifice time with family and with friends will no longer, these appointments will no longer dictate our schedule. And the, the peace which surpasses all human understanding, well, in heaven, it's going to abide with us forever. It's just going to be commonplace. Isn't that amazing? I mean, the Lord is in his holy temple. Um, at my last church, I was blessed to have... Um, a wonderful president of the congregation and his wife, Don and Laura Emick. And um, they were retired. They moved to Missouri from California. And they shared with me that when they were in California, 
because of their work, they were, they were so busy. They owned their own business and Laura was a teacher and they were just coming and going all the time. But now they were looking so forward, they're so glad that they were retired because now that they were retired, they had the time to be able to devote to, to God's house. And Don and Laura Emick were just two of those wonderful saints uh, in the kingdom who, you know, just gave of their time, their talent, their treasure, and they were an inspiration to me. And so, uh, you know, I think for us, as we look forward to heaven, in some ways, it's going to be like that. We're just going to have the freedom of time because we're going to have all of eternity. And it's just going to be great. The Lord is in his holy temple and you and I will be there with him by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Psalm 11, verse 5, the Lord tests the righteous. You're one of the righteous. I'm one of the righteous. God tests us. Why does he test us? So that then we become stronger against Satan, the world, and yes, our own sinful flesh. And then the last one I want to I wrap up with is Psalm 11, verse 7, for the Lord is righteous, right? Look at how Psalm 11 started. In the Lord I take refuge. Look how it ends. For the Lord is righteous. In the Lord I take refuge. For the Lord is righteous. See, you can work that into your prayer time. For yourself, for others, right? <clears throat> um, this is why God is worthy of trust. This is why he's not just a, a this, this idea of trust is not just a, a mental concept, a great philosophy. It's, it's, it's real, and, and, and this is a real blessing for you and I today. He is a sure and certain refuge. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's been great to be with you. I want to close this with a prayer. And uh, I want to encourage you to join us uh, via Facebook for worship this weekend. Or if you come in person, just register online. It'd be great to have you. Um, our worship times tomorrow at 5 uh, and then Saturday, I'm sorry, Sunday at uh, 8 and 1030. Love to have you join us online or in person, whatever works out better for you and for your schedule. Let's, uh, let's bow our heads for a prayer guided by God's word tonight. Let us pray. Father, thank you for giving us confidence in spite of our circumstances. But the truth is, we have often chosen to be afraid, turning to doubt and listening to voices of despair. Forgive us, set our feet on solid ground, lift us up out of the miry clay. In our lives, we have friends who do not fully trust you, and their words reflect this. Prepare us to give the correct answer for the hope that is within us, with the correct attitude, one of gentleness and respect. We don't always like the tests you place in our lives, but we are thankful that you make us stronger in our faith because this is exactly what we need for this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask all these things confidently and boldly in the name of Jesus, according to your will. Amen. Amen. Guys, let's go in peace. Let's serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.